The third eye is a common esoteric concept in Eastern religions. But did you know the third eye really exists? No, it's nothing supernatural. It has nothing to do with enlightenment, clairvoyance, or higher consciousness. We also have very little to no trace of it at all. Reptiles, amphibians, and fish have the real third eye. It's not much of an eye, but considering that these modern animals have it, what are the odds that their monstrous prehistoric cousins had a similar structure? The odds are looking pretty good, so let's take a closer look. Some animals have a hole in the top of their skull. This hole is called the pineal foramen. Animals with us today that have this hole include the tuatara, most lizards, frogs, salamanders, some bony fish, some sharks, and lampreys. Mammals don't have this hole, as they developed along the evolutionary pathway, which led to an ultra-fused noggin, giving us the power of stability and super strong bites. Our ancestors, the Therapsids, did have this hole in the top of their skull, which means at some point it was no longer helpful to our forebears and was lost. This hole is like an eye socket, though differs in some key ways. The eye-like organ that rests in the hole is called the pineal, parietal, or third eye. Where this eye is present, it is always smaller and more rudimentary than the two main eyes and covered by skin. Therefore, you cannot see it on the outside of the head. This eye doesn't hook up to the wiring that connects the eyes to the brain, and it cannot create images. Instead, the parietal eye connects to the epithalamus part of the brain, which connects to the pineal gland. These bits are super important for the limbic system, the secretion of sleepy time chemicals, and hormones from the pituitary gland, which is super important for the circadian rhythm, regulation of motor pathways for emotions, and how the body stores its energy. When it comes to reptiles and amphibians, the pineal eye helps with regulating circadian rhythm and hormone production for thermoregulation. In other words, it helps them keep their bodies at the right temperature. It does this by sensing lightness and darkness. These pineal eyes are rather similar to normal eyes in their structure. They have a retina, cornea, and lens, all of which are simpler than the same components in the normal image-making eye. Mosasaurs, the giant sea reptiles of the Cretaceous, being marine lizards, have the hole for the pineal eye as well. The size of their pineal hole varies quite dramatically from species to species. Some have relatively small pineal holes, while others have enormous gaping holes in their skulls. So, what are these titanic oceanic leviathans using their third peepers for? Well, no one really knows for sure. A 2016 thesis paper by Andrew Connolly sought to look for possible explanations for the function of this forehead hole. Obviously, it would probably have some of the same uses that modern lizards and snakes have for their pineal eye. Mosasaurs are closely related to snakes and monitor lizards after all. However, they were quite a bit different from their modern cousins in being entirely marine, and all of them occupied entirely distinct niches in their ecosystems. There's a little bit of a trend when it comes to pineal eyes. The pineal complex, including the eye, the socket, and pineal gland, become bigger and more pronounced in animals that live in higher, cooler latitudes. This may be the result of needing a higher sensitivity to lower intensity light. The pineal eye is pretty much gone in turtles, but sometimes an even more rudimentary version of the organ is present. A team of researchers proposed in 2014 that the pineal body triggers migration in the leatherback sea turtle due to seasonal variation in day length. The leatherback has a very thin pineal body. The research team, including John Davenport, T. Todd Jones, Thierry Work, and George Belez, referred to this organ in the turtle as a skylight. It allows for higher absorption of low-intensity light at higher latitudes. These turtles are known to migrate seasonally to really high latitudes, as high as Newfoundland, Scotland, and even northern Norway. This is highly unusual for a reptile, and the turtle also evolved gigantothermy to cope with the stress of cold environments. 
gigantothermy, being the ability for an animal to generate enough heat to keep a constant internal temperature just by being big and moving around. No other migratory sea turtle has such a modified pineal body, nor do any of these vacationing turtles dip their flippers in such cold waters. Another group of researchers in the late 1970s found that lizards, which lack a pineal eye, live within 10 degrees of the equator, but those that do not have a pineal eye tend to live in higher latitudes. Therefore, it was hypothesized that the pineal eye-bearing lizards of higher latitudes have their eyes so they can better adapt to the more extreme changes in weather and temperature between seasons in higher latitude regions. An interesting phenomenon has convergently popped up in a group of archosauriforms during the Triassic period. Pineal glands and their holes are common among reptiles, so it goes without saying that there would be a great diversity of critters that had them. Archosaurs are rather distinct from all known groups of reptiles. A majority didn't have noticeable pineal eyes or the holes that held them. For example, birds and crocs don't have them. The Protopycnosians are a small group of newly described archosauriform reptiles from the Triassic period known only from two types of critters, Trioptychus and Cranosaura. Both of them are extremely fragmentary, only the caps of the skulls were found. These caps are convergent in two ways. For one, they are heavily reinforced and domed, like in the Pachycephalosaurian dinosaurs that evolved a hundred million plus years after them. For another, there's a deep hit at the back of the skull that makes the whole skull roof look like a bloated lumpy donut, or something else that cannot be shown on YouTube. That hole may be one of two things. It may be what happens when multiple chunks of bony armor located on different parts of the skull grow into and fuse to one another to create the dome. In other words, it's literally just a donut hole with no function. The other explanation for the hole is that it is the animal's pineal hole where the pineal eye was. The pineal identification is a little on the iffy side since there seems to be no internal connections between the hole and the space where the brain used to be, the brain case. It could also be that those internal networks were eroded away, but it's the less supported of the two hypotheses. Connolly's thesis study looked at five mosasaurs to see if their third eyes functioned like their modern cousins. Since mosasaurs were worldwide and have different pineal hole sizes, they are a good group of critters to use to correlate size and location to use of that third eye. What couldn't really be determined is if the mosasaurs could use their third eye to orient themselves around the sun, since you can't observe their behavior. What can be measured though is their bone structures, which would tell you which ones were good at deep diving and which ones like to stay in the shallows. Spongy bone indicates a critter able to deep dive, since the spongy bone would negate the problem of the bends. Spongy bone was found in Platycarpus, Plioplatycarpus, and Tylosaurus. Hypothetically, these guys would need a big light-sensitive third eye in order to better orient themselves when down in the deep. shallow water mosasaurs, on the other flipper, would therefore need to have a smaller third eye since they're always up where the sun is shining. As such, Connolly came up with two hypotheses to explain the third eyes. The first states that the size of the third eye socket increases for mosasaurs in higher latitudes. The second states that the third eye socket is larger in mosasaurs that have spongier bone and smaller in thicker boned mosasaurs. The results showed that there was a weak correlation between third eye socket size and latitudes. This means there is rather weak evidence supporting either hypothesis. It's not definitive and therefore not helpful, even in the slightest. You can even see here among the skulls of Mosasaurus, Platycarpus, Plioplatycarpus, and Tylosaurus that the third eye socket varies wildly among them. It is big in Platycarpus and Plioplatycarpus, but small in Tylosaurus, which is known to be capable of deep diving and is known from higher latitudes. All in all, the jury is still out as to the specific uses mosasaurs may have had for their third eyes. They definitely had them, and they definitely served at least some of the most basic functions as those of their modern cousins. But anything beyond that remains to be seen. Special thanks to Armin Reindel for information on Crocs, and for Andrew Connolly for working with me.
For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Ray, Isaiah Garza, Dinosaur, Christoph Hubinger, Biotiverse, and Arda Bayer. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons The Dogman, Iron Bladesman, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.